everybody, I'm Danny Otto. Welcome into an all new episode of That Recap Show. Now, normally this would be the part where I'd say major spoiler alert ahead, but we are still on this journey towards the Deadpool and Wolverine movie. And along the way, we are revisiting all of the past X-Men and Deadpool movies. Speaking of Deadpool, we are so close to the Deadpool and Wolverine movie. Today, we are going back and rewatching Deadpool 2. So without further ado, let's start the show. Poppin' Off presents That Recap Show. Joining with me to break down our favorite moments from Deadpool 2, it's Johnny Rico! Hello! Hello! We are here. We are. We, yeah, this is pretty much so like here. the last real stop we need to make before the movie. It is. That's what I was yeah. going to say. Now, this isn't going to end, you know, our journey towards Deadpool and Wolverine, but this is kind of basically the last stop before, mm-hmm. the last major stop. Yeah, we need Deadpool to get here at least before the movie. <laughs> right, right. We had to get here to completely prepare for the movie. Because, I mean, in the, in the trailers that we've seen uh, of, of Deadpool and Wolverine, I mean, we, we have basically kind of the fallout of what happens at the end of this movie. So, mm-hmm. like, I mean, this is kind of the continuation. Like, this is where it all starts, basically. There's so much we're going to get into. I mean, we can actually do predictions. Yeah. Like, for, for, for real, for real, we can actually do predictions after this one. Um, yeah, there, there's... Whew, just like I was saying with the first Deadpool, this is very difficult because, you know, we haven't finalized our lists. That's that's what we're going to do in, in one of the, the final two uh, movies that we have on, on this uh, rewatch. Um, but this is up there. I don't I don't know where this one is on the list. It's definitely not higher than the first Deadpool movie. It's kind of like for me, it's like with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2. Both good movies. But Guardians of the Galaxy 1 for me at least came out of nowhere and I just was instantly like sold on the characters. Right. And I loved it. So like guardians two still great movie, but guardians one, I'll always have that, that like remembering how perfect it was when I saw it type of thing, like going, walking out of the, like the theater and going, Oh shit. I it's knew nothing. Experience. Right. Yeah. I yeah. knew nothing. And now I love these characters. It's the same, it's the same with Deadpool one and Deadpool two. Like, absolutely love both movies but the first deadpool movie will always like hold a special place in my heart um that's not to say that this is like gonna turn in like exactly like with the with the first the recap of the first movie this is gonna turn into me going my favorite line my favorite scene part right. par- parts of the movie that i you know will always run non-stop in my head there's plenty of those i want to mention first of, of all i love you know, I love that we get so many throwaway gags, and I'm gonna mention some like some of them now, some of them in my takeaways. But the first one, I, I have to just because you know we've gone down this whole road where we've had you know the OG cast of the X Men, we've had the 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 younger cast of of X Men, and then we've also had Deadpool where he's kind of made the jokes that like we have the the mansion, and you'd think that Fox would spring for some money to get a little bit more, like a few more actors in here and stuff like that. And so in this movie, we take it a step further, and he's actually at the mansion and riding around, and, he, and he's saying to Colossus, it's only ever you two here. And then it pans out, and then in the room, it shows the entire younger cast of X-Men, and they just- Haven't aged a day, I'm telling yeah, you. <laughs> they, they just, they just kind of close the door. Mm-hmm notices they never say anything and i did i didn't remember this until i made a point of me liking evan peters quicksilver that much evan peters quicksilver is in that like i didn't i didn't even think of that like remembering it before i did i didn't in my head until i had a re until i rewatched it i didn't remember he was in it yeah, um, and it fits because he's with the team at the end of apocalypse too so he is. yeah it does work <laughs> he is he is um I also, you know, I, I have to mention right in the opening, just because it's in the opening of the movie, and we we mentioned it when we were recapping uh, 
Logan on how, you yeah. know, Logan came first, then Deadpool 2. It was kind of, you know, in between type of thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I in in true like Deadpool fashion, he basically is kind of mocking Logan. And and like first with the music box where he it's it's got basically the end yeah. of of Wolverine of Logan, like impaled, and mm-hmm. it's it's spinning around and he puts it down and he basically says Fuck Wolverine. Fuck Wolverine for dying. Mm-hmm. Like and for, for first he copied us with an R rating, then he dies. Like, you know what I mean? I just thought I just thought it was funny and it was perfectly in sync with, you know, Deadpool in general, breaking the fourth the fourth wall, but also, you know, kind of making light of a character in the first movie that he was like always kind of mentioning and, and he's always kind of like mentioning here and there and stuff like that and teasing about. So yeah. I, I just thought it was kind of the perfect way to kind of give a nod to Logan and and the movie and the success of that movie and 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 kind of the send off for that Logan character type of thing like I think it was like the perfect in universe way to do that. Um, I was waiting to see what this movie was going to do as a take on like the, the, the Logan movie after this. Like uh, it was and and then what, what, yeah when you see that music box you're just like all right I'll have to, right off the gate <laughs> one many punches I loved it. <laughs> yeah, it was really well done. Um, there's plenty more stuff I want to talk about. Those are just like right off the cuff, the first things that I definitely wanted to get into. Um, but Regal, what were some of your instant reactions for uh, Deadpool Two? Yeah, this is definitely like uh, this is this is Deadpool times two. Like it, everything's ramped up, uh, and, and you can definitely tell that they, they they put a lot, like like the success of the first movie. They put a lot more money into this too. Yeah. and there's a lot of scenes in there where you could definitely see where that budget went to uh, to to play really well. Um, but again, uh, just like the first movie, man, one of the first the things I love about this whole franchise was the the marketing campaign for this. And uh, and one thing in particular for me is I remember when uh, they dropped the music video for uh, the song "Ashes" by Celine Dion of all people. Uh, and you and you're like, what? Celine Dion did a song for Deadpool, and you watch the video, and you're watching. Uh, Deadpool doing these like really beautiful dances behind Celine Dion. Like you're just like, what kind of world am I living in where like one of the greatest singers of all time is doing this with one of like the most crass characters of all time? Uh, it was it's just like a, it was a really fun thing to see back then. Uh, just like talk about a wild clash of uh, of worlds. Uh, and and again, and this and the song plays through a bunch of times throughout the movie, of course. Right. Uh, but it most in, Notably, I guess, in the uh, the James Bond esque opening sequence that they did, I, I like the way they kind of step up of that part from the first movie, um, and and of course doing the same thing with the opening credits, making fun of the crew, uh, and then this time it, it being directed by I think David Leitch, who was one of the guys from John Wick. That's where they they, they make that uh, reference in there, like uh, brought to you by one of the assholes who killed the dog in John Wick, <laughs> which is really funny. Uh, but yeah, I think it, it it was just really well done stuff on the. And it's again. Uh, we're doing. They're they're still doing some really great marketing stuff for for Deadpool and Wolverine too. Uh, uh, not Deadpool and Wolverine too, but no, as well. Uh, <laughs> Deadpool and Wolverine too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I just like the way that they're able to come up with these really original ideas that just keeps uh, really and and it brings in all different types of demographics. Like you gotta imagine there are people who hear this who are just you know normal Celine Dion fans. Like, oh, what a beautiful song is for this Deadpool two movie. <laughs> uh, but. Yeah, it won't be my first time praising uh, music in this movie, but it, it, it that that was just a really uh, one of my favorite memories as far as like the, the hype for this movie. Yeah, and I mean we were talking about before before we started recording. I I there are some things that get kind of like are are very similar, I guess, to to the first one. But I do love the opening scene. Like oh, I, yeah. I I do really I enjoy seeing the his his little personal uh, music box again. Like kind of almost exactly how the first one starts. Like I enjoyed that. Absolutely loved like that we kick it off with DMX before we get into the Celine Dion song too. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it just gets me amped for for what's about to happen. Um, but uh, before we get in too far too far into it, because there's so much to kind of unpack and talk about with this movie, you want to get to some big takeaways? Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. All right, why don't you kick off big takeaways? Okay. Uh, so for me, for the most part, I feel like this movie. Uh, while it does it all very well, like it's not gonna, it's not a knock on the movie at all, but it definitely does rehash a lot of the same bits and story formula from the first movie. Um, I was telling you before, we, like uh, before we start recording, like even Weasel goes back to the same avocado joke 
when referring to maskless Deadpool. Uh, and at, it's, it's just like, yeah, okay. We, every time, you, and you can always kind of see where things are going when when you can see like where it's calling back to the first movie. Uh, you know, okay, if they uh, see if they do that, and it's cool because you know we're adding more characters, so they do a good job of adjusting the jokes to kind of fit the situation, so it doesn't. And, and and again, it works for the formula of the Deadpool character because Ryan Brown's just so good at doing that, right? Um, but so it, it's certainly not knocking on the movie at all. It's, it's still it's still an enjoyable ride all the way through. Um, it just it, I think that's part of the thing uh, things that I'm so excited about Deadpool and Wolverine is that it feels like it's going to deter from that formula in a big way uh, because of the MCU formula as well. So um, it's that kind of clash of those styles. I'm very interested to see uh, the differences in that. Um, but Really, one of the best like in surprises for me in this movie is the inclusion of of uh, the Juggernaut character. From I, I have hand, hands down, like they like you can kind of feel it when they were kind of building up to him, but like when we finally get to see him and he actually like looks like the Juggernaut too. Like I love the Vinnie Jones version from uh, X Men Three, uh, just because I love Vinnie Jones. But um, I, I needed to see like that kind of like like that that towering figure that I've, I'm used to seeing in like the comics and the X Men uh, animated series and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, that was really great. Um, and I love that Ryan Reynolds voices the character and then just kind of yeah. they kind of change his voice, vocal tones. So it's, it's just really funny. Uh, and I just like the way, like, they, uh, the little, like, the big brother vibe that he has with the, uh, with uh, Rusty. Rusty. Uh, it was really great. Um, so, yeah, that's just really great. Uh, but also during the big fight sequence at the end of the movie, when they finally go toe to toe with uh, Juggernaut. Um, uh, they, there's this amazing music that's playing and as a score, and it's like a choir. Uh, one that's going like you hear the, like the, the the male singers thing like you can't stop this motherfucker, <laughs> and then you hear like uh, the 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 female singers going holy shit balls, oh holy shit balls. You're just like, what is this music playing during this uh, this scene right now? And it made me. I remember when I saw the movie, it made me go back to Spotify to go look it up, and I added it to like my little movie score playlist because I loved it that much. Uh, but yeah, the way they have fun with like the scores and stuff like that, the little tropes that usually the movies usually have. Uh, it's just really well done. Um, and yeah, I, I, oh my gosh, like that, those, those particular music moments for me are just really, really great. Um, and, and yeah, I, I just loved it so much. Yeah. I mean, what's really cool about, you know, both Deadpool movies is you can really tell that every aspect of these movies from start to finish have been thought about of how can we make this funnier or how can we make this better? Yeah. In a world of, you know, huge, you know, comic book movies, huge, like, action movies and stuff like that, sometimes things like that get overlooked. And and you can really tell with, with these two movies that, like, that is just kind of one thing. It's like, it's not we want to make the, the best movie possible to make the most money. It's we want to make this movie so it's as enjoyable on every single level as possible. And, oh, yeah. They want to stay true to the, especially because of Ryan's overall creative overseeing of the character. Too. I think he wants to stay as true as possible to what he has the vision too. Right, and I, I just think that it's really notable, and it's really like it's just it's really cool that you can kind of you can tell that from from watching these, and and you can enjoy <laughs> that, like and, and you can enjoy it, like like you said, you can enjoy it pretty, pretty much every aspect of it. You can enjoy the soundtrack because of the the just not batshit crazy versions of songs or anything like that, but like the crazy things that they did that you wouldn't expect Celine mm -hmm. Dion having a say, like a song on it. That yeah, it's choir just... so, like, you know what I mean? Like it's just every aspect of this movie was made to, to like add and enhance the movie and, and the, the movie experience, I guess of mm -hmm. it type of thing. And I just think I think that's super notable um, for it. Um, it kind of, kind of going along kind of the same lines that as, as you were, I like the addition of, of a lot of characters and I, I really enjoyed, you know, how Deadpool and Cable played off of each other. Now I really like Domino too, but you know, Deadpool and Cable are kind of, I feel like opposite, opposite sides of a coin where we have, you know, Oh yeah. Cables that, that real dark brooding and, and it gets into one of my favorite jokes um, and my, my favorite kind of scenes in general. And it's, you know, when they're having their, their original battle at the ice box and, and, uh, Deadpool's like, 
I just have three like I have three questions for you. Like when he figures out like he's from the future and stuff, he goes, "Is du- is dubstep still around?" Oh and, yeah, <laughs> I forget what the other two questions are, but that's just the one that I, I always remembered. And and uh, Cable turns to me and and goes, "Dubstep's like pussies. You're so dark. Are you sure you're not from the DC universe? Are you sure you're not from the the DC universe? <laughs> like, yeah." Yeah, and then of course, Q dubstep. It just started like Devil goes. I love dubstep, and dubstep just starts. They have another great DC joke earlier when he goes back to Vanessa and goes, "Ah, oh, I got in a fight with another superhero." He goes, "Only his mother was named main was black yeah. too." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like but, they were doing like they they this movie really kind of like uh, widened their horizon or right. like their their targeting as far as who they're making meta jokes on because I feel like the first one was making a lot of just like the X Men. Oh, they and more like self-referential jokes to Ryan Reynolds himself. And then right. on this one, he's like, okay, well, now we we've established like our credibility. Now we're going after everybody. And it's yeah. actually really fun to watch. Like, it, yeah, they make the yeah, they make the, the Winter Soldier arm reference. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I say. There's a ton of MCU. And I, I can't remember when did we find out that that uh like Marvel slash Disney was buying 20th Century Fox? Was it before or after this movie? Oh, it wouldn't be for another couple of years, I think. It wouldn't be? Because I'm, I'm wondering if they just kind of were starting to get the idea that maybe at some point Deadpool was going to be in the yeah. MCU. Well, they still had Dark Phoenix and, and New Mutants to come out, too. So, And it wasn't, I think, until after those movies came out that they actually acquired the rights, if I'm not mistaken. But I thought the deal, we, I thought we were already hearing rumblings of the deal long before Dark Phoenix and New Mutants. Like, I thought those were getting shelved on, almost maybe. on purpose type of thing. Anyway, but yeah, there there are so many more mm-hmm. uh, like MCU jokes. So I'm just, it, it was just funny that like, you know, you you see all these references to you know the MCU properties. You also see the the DC like jokes and and stuff like that. But yeah. but just in general, I I do really like how Deadpool and and Cable kind of played off of each other. Like you know, at a, at one point they're kind of you know forced to work together, and it it's that dynamic that you kind of like in in and I I don't want to call it a, a buddy cop or a buddy team up or or, or thing like that, but it is one of those kind of things where like, they're kind of, we've got to work together to odd couple. Yeah. yeah. An, an odd pair, like a begrudging, like uh teammates, like, you, yeah. you know, what I mean? something, something like that. So I think that really works and it works well. And, and yeah, I mean, I thought, I think Josh Brolin did a really good job as cable. I, I do really like that. Deadpool like keeps referencing how Josh Brolin is actually shorter because he's much shorter. He's not. He's not towering over everybody. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I was actually gonna make that that same uh, reference. Like it's it's kind of funny how we have like kind of two pitch perfect castings as as Cable and Wolverine. But the only thing that will actually make them both perfect is like both these guys just kind of swap heights. Yeah, if they, <laughs> if they swap. Yeah. yeah, it's like dang. Like if only Josh Brolin was like this towering six foot three guy, and if only Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Was Josh Rollins I like in this movie? It is a really funny thing, like to, to see Cable, like as for as uh, uh, like imposing as a figure as he is in like the, the animated show or even in the comics. He's such a jacked figure, and then you want to see him like in this group. He's just like kind of like the little right. little older guy with everybody, and it's just kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> but he's still badass as hell. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's he's definitely badass, and and I mean, he's badass as Thanos too. I mean, I guess, yeah. I guess he, they kind of CGI to make them make him a little bit bigger as Thanos. I, so. They did one scene where you know he's. I think it's when he's maybe interrogating a uh, weasel. Uh, but he's speaking off camera before it pans up to him, and it's like he's doing a Thanos voice. Like it seems like he's not just doing Cable, but he's speaking like Thanos on purpose. It sounded like because when I heard him speak, I'm like, that is that is very like like Thanos y <laughs> tones, not as well like the actual like Cable that we've been kind of hearing. And I was like, oh my god, it's like, it's like what they're doing. And I think it was the same year that Infinity War came out. Like they they were not too it far was. apart. So it the was. fact, yeah, that we were get, we were getting the double dip of Josh Brolin in two major roles was a, was a pretty wild all time (laughs) yeah absolutely yeah it it was i think it was deadpool 2 no i think it was infinity war then then deadpool Deadpool 2 2. yeah yeah yeah. but like within a A a few months yeah Yeah. like like a month or two type of thing but yeah uh you want to get to some predictions yeah let's do it yeah we can officially say predictions for the first time on this list we can actually say predictions because we are so close i still like to spitball though Oh, you, you can spitball too. I'm gonna we, spitball. We can do a little bit of both. I'm gonna do a little prediction. Bit of I'm gonna spit. I'm gonna put prediction and a little spitball. You're gonna predict and spit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick my this. prediction with a spitball. <laughs> I'm gonna kick this off. 
I, I like like I mentioned, I I enjoyed Cable and and Deadpool and how they played off of each other. I enjoyed mm-hmm. that a lot. What I'm wondering, you know, we we've kind of been, you know, during this entire rewatch, you know, list, we we've kind of been kind of gearing up to like what could we be taking from this movie? And obviously, this is a the direct sequel. Like you, you know what I mean? Like Deadpool and Wolverine is kind of the direct sequel to Deadpool two at this point. Um, so we know a lot of characters are returning. What I'm interested in is will we see Cable in this in this movie? There's been no sight of him in any of like the teaser trailers and any of the the real trailers and and stuff like that. I mean, we've we've been they've they've thrown out a lot of stuff already that that you know I'm hoping that the surprises are are even crazier than the stuff that they've you know already shown us in the official mm-hmm. like teasers and, and trailers but yeah nothing not a mention of cable not a not a sight of it like his arm or, or anything so i'm wondering if we're gonna get anything about cable and i could o- the only thing i could think that would make it perfect is if we get either a, like a, a a scene or two of him at the very beginning when we're still dealing with Deadpool's universe, you know, Wade pretty much hanging up the 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 Deadpool costume in general type of thing. Like we get some interaction between the two of them type of thing. Just as like it could be a throwaway, it could be anything. Just kind of like you know, uh, uh, he was here, like t- type of thing. Because we have so many characters from the end of Deadpool two at the beginning of Deadpool and Wolverine that I think it would feel weird if we didn't. The one thing I don't want. Because I really do want this movie to be like a, a you know, a, a buddy, buddy, Deadpool and Wolverine duo. I don't want there to be like a part where there's a a, a big chunk of Deadpool, Wolverine, and Cable together type of thing. Like I don't want that. But what I would really like to see is something while we're still dealing with Wade's original universe, where we kind of get some sort of reference. It could be something as stupid as you know. The very beginning of the movie is Cable finding Wade right after he made all the changes with with the uh, the time like the time machine thing, and just taking it from him, type of thing, and going, "That's it. You, you did your last change. You're 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 fucking with everything. That's it. I'm taking it back." Like you know what I mean? Like it could be something as silly as that, and that's all we get, you know. And so like that's why Deadpool is like, you know, so protective of Vanessa and everybody else because he can't change anything again like everything has to be perfect from from for now on like because there's no duo no more do-overs because cable f- officially took it back like i can see that kind of being like playing into like now now wade is really paranoid about you know vanessa potentially being killed again or anybody else like you know what i mean like i can see that kind of being a thing because there's no do-overs so he's worried hmm. and that's kind of why he you know decides to hang up stuff and and keep away from vanessa a little bit so but yeah, I, I'm hoping we get something, even if it was like a throwaway line of like in the void, we see a version of Thanos and and you know we don't see him at first. We just hear the voice. And just like you were saying, it kind of matches Cable's voice. And right. Deadpool turns around and goes, Cable? And then out of the shadows comes like a, a version of Thanos. A Thanos, that'd be funny. That would be, that could be a thing. That could be a yeah. thing. I could see that. But anyway, yeah, I, I it just, that was just kind of one, like the, the, the prediction that I'm having, like, cause I mean, spoiler alert, we, we had the, the final trailer. So, you know, we know X-23 is in the movie now. <laughs> yeah, dang it. <laughs> I mean, I knew it. <laughs> you called it all along. I did call it. It's fine. You did. You did. You did. In, in our recording, chronologically, you, you called it before the trailer came out. Yep, it's in the files. So we, we, we do have, we have the timestamps. But anyway... <laughs> We officially know that, that that secret has been revealed. So like I'm I'm hoping the reason we haven't seen any reference, there's no no reference line, there's no reference sight of cable at all. I'm hoping is because they 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 made sure that that's gonna be like a, a, a fun little silly gag. That's what I'm hoping for. But uh what what are some of your predictions slash spitballs that, that you got? Because we are so close now. Yeah, it it would be a tough thing to pull off just because I think the Marvel 
the, the MCU would want to, to probably shy away from double dipping with a big star like that. Um, I think maybe uh, I want I I almost want to say that when when Deadpool was going back and changing all these timelines around that he probably did it in a way so that Cable could go back and be with with Hope, his daughter. Um, so we'll probably get some kind of line. I, I imagine we're gonna get a line that's in reference to him. I I hope like that's that's kind of like the extent that I would like to see it. That maybe being like, yeah, I sent him back home. Uh, he's doing great or whatever, and then maybe or even if we got like some kind of Easter egg with him in the void and some in some form, whether it's like his arm or something like that, uh, would be kind of cool. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not totally against seeing a, a reference or some form of a Easter egg of Cable. Um, I don't think we'll actually get like the full on like Brolin there. That would be that, that would be a pretty big leap forward in my opinion, but pretty awesome to see. Um, but man, one of my favorite like I kind of surprised that's it's like. Uh, like surprises like oh my gosh look at that but like uh, a pleasant surprise as far as like i didn't suspect, expect to like this character as much as i did uh was uh, zazzy beats as domino yeah. um just like not knowing a whole ton about like her power set and just what like the character is i know she's involved with the x-force and the devil character stuff of that in the comics um but just kind of seeing uh the way that uh, zazzy beats portrays her in this movie is just really a lot of fun um, I like the way they play with like you know the power of luck and like the whole like the mm-hmm. way that they argue about it in the whole meeting too. Like mm, I don't think it's really uh, you know, probably like mm, yes it is. And he goes okay, I'll let me, I'll call you back. I know it does. No, it's not. It's like they have like this really long argument about you. Really funny. Um, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I feel like this is the character that I would like to almost see transfer into the MCU some form into like this new X Men world. Um, I feel like if they did ever want to revisit a character like Domino, you could bring in Zossy Beats and and it wouldn't really matter too much. Um, and, and just because I think, uh, it, 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 her character just it, it, it has a cool story in the in the in the movie, but you know it, it doesn't really matter too much if you bring her over from one universe to another, and and, and it's not going to affect anything too much. And and Zazie Beast is a really great actress. She also was end up being in uh, Joker as well. Um, but also, oh, right. uh, yeah, she would be in Joker, and then so I. But we haven't seen her kind of dip, dip her toes into the actual MCU yet, and I would actually like to see that too because she's also great in the show Atlanta. Um, so like, yeah, she's a really great actress, a really good resume. So I think they could really utilize her well again as Domino. Yeah. I mean, we didn't, I, I'm totally in, in agreement. I mean, we didn't even get into like, there's so much to talk about in this movie. Yeah. Uh, we even get into like when, where they're like auditioning all the team members for X-Force. Yeah. And, the X-Force and, is like, a big highlight of this. Yeah. Baby legs too. We've talking about baby legs. <laughs> we didn't even, we didn't even talk about baby legs. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, after we saw the final trailer for Deadpool and Wolverine, we obviously know that, you know, Deadpool is holding a picture that has nine people in it. And they, and he goes, this is my entire world are these nine people. And we were kind of counting on our hand, like figuring out who those nine people are. So I'm wondering if not only are, you know, Deadpool and, and Wolverine going to, you know, make it into the MCU I'm wondering if those nine people are also going to make it with Wade into the MCU type of thing. Yeah. Shatterstar. Yeah, I mean, which is which is an odd choice because yeah. uh, I mean, not all of X Force is there. We got Peter there for sure. P- yeah. Peter's there. <laughs> but, I like uh, that uh, Shatterstar is from Mojo World now. After seeing X Men ninety seven, we see more of Mojo. It's like it's most funny. He's actually hanging out with that fucking asshole. <laughs> so it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> uh, I was like, oh man, that'd be cool feet. Eventually, we get like an MC version of Mojo World. <laughs> I mean, look, you never know. The sky's the limit. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, I just I'm wondering. Like, there's so much to wonder about with this movie now, and and yeah, I, it, we're so close. I'm so excited. Like, just you know, this like we've kind of said this entire countdown, like towards this and and rewatching and and kind of you know doing these retro recaps as we've gone have just made me more and more and more excited. And, and like this time next week, we'll both have seen the movie. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And and we'll be recapping that movie. And, mm. and then we will officially have the, the spoiler alert at, on it so that yeah. uh, we don't ruin it for everybody. But uh, in the meantime, as we always say, let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Oh, I think yeah. you I usually go. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But let us know, uh, are you rewatching the fir- at least the first and the second Deadpool movies in preparation for Deadpool and Wolverine? And what are your favorite moments from the second Deadpool movie? And as always, don't forget, 
like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to hear about all of our latest audio and video podcast releases. Bye, everybody! Popping Off presents That Recap Show.